This is Chester Zoo. It's considered to be one of the best zoos in the world. Even the animals think so. It opened on the 10th of June, 1931. We take it a bit for granted today, but 100 years ago, zoos didn't look like this. Zoos were nothing more than cages with hard floors and iron bars, sometimes only big enough for the poor animal to turn around. George Mottershead was not only the founder of the Chester Zoo, he actually built some of what you see with his own two hands. And a little help from his friends. He had an idea that would be the defining feature of modern zoos. A zoo without bars. George Mottershead was born in Sale Moor, now part of Greater Manchester, here at number 33 Lindau Terrace on the 12th of June, 1894. In 1902, when George Mottershead was eight years old, the Boer War had just ended. To celebrate the victory, his father Albert brought George and his little brother Stanley to Manchester for a day at the zoo. They came down these very stairs and headed this way. Come on, it's only a few miles. Bellevue was a wonderful diversion for all. It had attractions for young and old alike. Children especially loved to see the monkeys and elephants and begged their parents for treats to feed these gentle giants. But George stood in silence, shocked and repelled, without understanding why. The smell of the elephant enclosures is still in living memory. Some may remember the poor elephant standing in a foul-smelling building, its face pressed against the iron bars, pushing its trunk through to ring a bell, prompting people to reward it with treats. George had no idea what an elephant's natural habitat should be, but he knew this wasn't it. Confused by his emotions, he walked among the rows of small cages of monkeys and chimps, unamused by their antics. Later that day at home, George went to his own collection of animals. George, like most boys his age, had scooped up tadpoles and newts. He even had a collection of beetles, finches, and cockatiels. He satisfied himself that he had done the best he could to replicate the habitat he thought these animals would enjoy. Pleased with himself at supper, he boasted, when I grow up, I'm going to build a zoo. Everyone thought George had done well and laughed at his enthusiasm, but nobody heard the most important part of his plan. While they continued their laughter, he murmured, a zoo without bars. That's only the beginning of the story. There were many hurdles and setbacks for George along the way. Luckily, we know how the story ends. George Mottershead built his zoo without bars and Chester Zoo is now the benchmark by which all other zoos are judged. This was meant to be a much larger project that covered all of the events leading up to the opening of the Chester Zoo, which happened 90 years ago this week, along with George Mottershead's birthday. Unfortunately, life got in the way this week, so think of it as a little trailer happy birthday video. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe or leave a comment. We'd love to know what you think.